Hello everyone, this is Chad Miller, part of the CAD Geek team at Tata Technologies. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a daylight system in 3ds Max, and then we're going to make some changes to the default background to make it look a little bit more realistic and interesting. This video is part of an ongoing series by Tata Technologies, the premier Autodesk partner. Follow us at autodesk.cadgeekspeak.com or write to us at autodesk at tatatechnologies.com. The Daylight System in 3ds Max is a powerful tool that lets us quickly and easily create realistic illumination and shadows in the scene as if they were being created by an actual sun object. Um, first, we're going to need something to illuminate. So I'm going to draw some simple geometry in the scene. Just a small pyramid. And I'm going to open up my material editor. I can either hit the M key on the keyboard to do that or I can go up through rendering and see the material editor this way. I'm going to use the new slate material editor that's new to 3ds Max 2012. And I just want to give this some kind of material to make it look a little more realistic. Um, sand is appropriate, I think. I'll drag that out of the pyramid. And I also want some kind of ground because I found that these daylight systems work better if we have uh, a ground object. So I'm going to use a plane and I'm going to make it fairly large. We're going to go with 5,000 by 5,000 meters. Um, the length segments don't matter in this situation. And I'm also going to put a texture, a material, onto that plane. Um, different kind of sand. And now, as you can see, we have uh, some objects in the screen to uh, show our illumination and our shadows when we put in the daylight system. It's often difficult or even impossible to see our materials in our viewport. So throughout this demonstration, you're going to see me do a lot of quick renders. Uh, we can do that either through the menu bar under rendering, and the first option is render. That's going to do a quick render for us and we can see the two sand materials that we've applied to the objects. Right now the sky is black because we don't have any lights or any kind of uh, background in it yet. Usually instead of going through the menu bar though, I just use either Shift Q on the keyboard or F9 on the keyboard. That has the same effect and it's a little faster. Now let's create the actual daylight system. In the command panel, we'll click on the Systems tab. And underneath that, we'll click on Daylight. It's going to open up a dialog box asking us if we would like to automatically change a few settings. We'll select Yes to this. And in the top viewport, we'll click and drag, and we'll see a compass rose. That's just a placeholder that can be any size we would like. And once we're done with that, we're going to be prompted with another window asking us if we automatically want to add a mental ray physical sky environment map. We do, so we'll hit Yes. And after that, we click again to determine uh, the starting position of the sun object. It doesn't matter where we put that right now. The next thing we want to do is set our location so we can get real-time uh, shadows and illumination. So in the command panel again, we will click on Get Location. And since we model the pyramid, I think it's only appropriate that we put this somewhere in Africa, uh, let's say near Cairo. Now if we look over here, we can see that we're getting data for June 21st of 2011, and right now we're at noon. So let's just do a render, and we can see that that looks plausibly as if it could be noon. We have a nice blue sky with a gradient on it. It doesn't look terribly realistic, but we can see that we're starting to come together here. Now I want to show you what happens if we change the time on this daylight system. Let's select that sun object again and change the time to uh, 1700 hours, 5 o'clock, and do another render. This time we can see that we're starting to get some 
pink haze along the horizon. We have some deeper shadows on the pyramid. And we can even see the sun itself starting to enter our window. If we move it along another hour and do another render, we can see we're moving pretty close to sunset. And we have a nice, uh, the actual disk of the sun renders above the pyramid. If we move along another hour, the sun is almost completely set. I'll set us back to noon. And I'll do another render just to show you again that the sky is, is plain. It's just a plain blue. And we want to make that a little bit more interesting. We're going to put some clouds in there. So the first thing we want to do is go to rendering in the menu bar and select environment. We can see in the environment map slot that mental ray physical sky that was created automatically earlier. And with this open, we also want to open our material editor. We want to find a blank place in the material editor and drag this physical sky map somewhere into the material editor. I'm going to choose instance because any changes that I make in the material editor I want to apply in this map slot as well. And in addition to that physical sky map, we also need some kind of image of some kind of sky image for the actual clouds. So I'm going to drag out a bitmap, a blank bitmap. And when I do so, it's immediately going to ask me to select a bitmap image file. Uh, these can be JPEGs, they can be pings. Um, but I'm going to select a, a sky map that I already went out and found. If you want to do this yourself, you're going to want to find a fairly high resolution image. Anything low resolution is going to give you a kind of a muddy background. So I'm going to open that, that spherical sky map so that I have that and the physical sky map in my material editor. Now there are a number of changes we have to make in order for this cloud background to actually appear in our daylight system. First, the cloud bitmap is actually going to be plugged into the haze parameter in the physical sky. So we'll do that first. And then we'll double click on the bitmap and change in the coordinate section change it to environ and spherical environment. It's going to make sure that our map is wrapped around a sphere. In our physical sky, we want to deselect inherit from MR sky. And in our environments and effects dialog box, we're going to scroll down, change the physical scale from physical units to unit lists, and change this 1500 number to something very high, let's say 12,000. Now, if we do a render, we can see very faintly in this area that the clouds are there. They're just not very visible yet. At this point, getting a nice looking sky that we're happy with is mostly a matter of trial and error. Most of this is done through the bitmap parameters in the material editor. If we go down to the bottom of those parameters and find output, we expand that, we're going to get several different parameters we can set for the output of this bitmap. Uh, we mostly want to focus on output amount and RGB level. And from doing this in the past, I know that 2 and 4 are pretty good values to start with. So let's set those and see what our render looks like now. Now we can see that the sky is brighter and the clouds are more visible, they're popping from the background. That looks pretty good actually. Let's say I had set this RGB level at something higher though, let's say 10. If I had started there, I'd see this yellowness in the sky and just kind of a general, um, almost overexposed look to it. If that shows up, we know that the RGB level or the output amount is too high. Let's change that back down. Let's try 6 instead. Now we have a nice looking sky again. If we had set the output amount too low, say 0.5, we'd get something that looks much closer to the original uh, daylight system sky, just sort of a blue gradient with faint clouds in there. But if that's what we want, we can set the output amount low. I don't want it to look that way this time, so I'm going to change that to 1.5. And I think I'll leave it there.
Now I want to show you what I find to be the most impressive aspect of this method of creating a, a daylight system. If I change the time now to sometime later in the evening, and I render again, I can see that the clouds, in addition to the sky, are changing color. So we have a more realistic, more dramatic looking sunset. Something else, um, we can see the sun disk that is rendered here. There's actually a few things that we can change about that. If we go into the material editor in our physical sky map, at the very top we have the sun disk appearance parameters. Um, we can change the size of the sun with a scale. Changes the size of the disk that renders. I'll change that back to 4. We can also change the glow intensity. That gives it sort of this halo around the, around the edge. And if I change the disk intensity, it's going to make the edge a little sharper. We'll change those back to their default values. I'll advance our sunset a little bit. As you can see, there are many different parameters and options to experiment with to get your renderings to look exactly the way you want them to. And if you're creating a daylight system using this method in 3ds Max, I hope this video has proven helpful for you. Once again, this is Chad with the Tata Technologies CAD Geeks blog. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. And if you're interested, check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching.